Treasury yields made a big move higher this week. I think something that caught many off guard is called the range that we've seen in the 10 year Treasury yield is year to date has been about 260 to 280. We haven't really seen this, the either end threatened uh, too strongly. Yes, we've tested both ends of that range, but not with any real conviction. And if anything, we've tested the bottom end of that range more than the top. So right now we're kind of fearing a breakout to the downside. And lo and behold, things really shifted gears this week as we saw yields not only trade through 275, but actually starting to creep up closer to 280. And that's going to really start to be the level that we that we watch now. If we can get to 280 and beyond, that could change everything that we're seeing here because right now the this year since actually December FOMC we've seen Treasury yields trade from 280 pretty much straight down uh, without much of maybe a hiccup here or there that moved us back towards 275 and a little above but ultimately it's been a straight down trade as we've seen buyers with fears of global growth we've seen uh, we've seen geopolitical risks rise we've seen this this whole Brexit thing get thrown into the mess and likewise U.S. data has been mixed but it's kind of coming on the softer side in areas that are of concern. So right now, uh, seeing yields go higher has some people scratching their heads a little bit. But I think ultimately, after what we heard from the Fed chair this week, likewise with the stronger GDP data, and I think ultimately what we'll see next week in the stronger jobs numbers, yields are probably going to test the top end of this range. I don't know if we'll get through that 280 level in 10-year note yields, but ultimately we should test it as stronger jobs are expected. And if you look at market volatility, it is holding its, its, it's not going down which when we talk about what we've seen in volatility over the last 10 years since the Federal Reserve got heavily involved, uh, volatilities uh, that don't go down is essentially a positive day. So right now we're seeing a sideways trace, maybe a modest bid, uh, given the fact that we traded out of that 260 to 270 range, but we still remain in that macro 260 to 280 range in yield, which we just talked about. As long as we stay within there, volatility really has nowhere to go but sideways. I think that if we start to threaten a break above 280 or back below 260, that's when you'll start to see volatility become an issue. But right now we are we are more towards the middle of that range or at least remain in that range. And that is purely the definition of, of sideways or declining volatility doing what the market thinks it's going to do or thinks is expected to do. And that's what it's doing right now. So lastly, let's look at the Fed. We've got China. We've got Brexit. So the Fed really took center stage this week with Chairman Powell's testimony to Congress. I think some maybe thought he was a maybe a, could, a little more hawkish or had some more hawkish things to say in the Q&A with the possibility of keeping rate hikes on the table for 2019. I'm not sure that, that that's going to happen. I'm not sure the market thinks that's going to happen. But certainly uh, I think that the, he throws out there and maybe keeping it. The Fed's going to be patient this year, but don't want to rule anything out. And I think that's more for the second part of this year. And if you look at what's happening in China, I think there's optimism that the economics will come back there that we've seen, maybe not we've seen in years past, but certainly better than the recent news we've gotten. Likewise, China and U.S. trade talks continue to bounce around. If we can get any kind of, of deal penned, that would be very positive, I think, to everyone involved. And it would certainly help uh, it would certainly help all businesses here. We've seen the effects on, it has on the stock market. I don't know how directly it affects Treasury speak, but I think yields would go higher with the idea that you would see risk off. Uh, you see risk takers sort of sort of adding to their risk and selling bonds to do so. And lastly, the Brexit. That's the big one. That's the one we've been talking about. And if you know, you look at the you look at what's happening over there. There's still an uncertainty, and most central banks preparing for what we're going to call the hard Brexit and how the ripple effects could affect each and every one of their financial systems, I think treasuries will be a beneficiary to that. And one of the reasons why I think we're not seeing a higher push in, in yields today or this week is the fact that, yes, I think there's profit taking on longs. And yes, I think that, that yields will continue to creep higher. But I don't know if we'll see that, that, big, uh, that big move uh, with the idea that Brexit is just right around the corner now, 28 days away. And when that comes, I think the uncertainty will be see a flight to quality bid to bonds. Perhaps we got it too soon, and that's why we're seeing this pullback. But ultimately, I think that bonds are going to see another move towards the lows of the range. Likewise, you'll see higher gold prices, and I think even equities might find some sellers out there as well. So I think that right now, being patient, if you're a buyer, you can be in Treasury land. But ultimately, I think you're going to need to start looking to, to buy here. If we get close to that 280 yield level, that will be the level to start buying because I think it's going to move very quickly if it moves towards 260 on the risks that we see or the risks that we don't know about yet with Brexit and any kind of hard Brexit landing.